Good morning, everyone from Cashers, North Carolina. Always good to be with you in this time of prayer. You know the drill. Center yourselves, center your hearts, lift them, and we'll begin those prayers. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We've been reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians, and now we're on to the second letter. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of Thessalonians of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God and is intended to make you worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering. For it is indeed just of God to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to give relief to the afflicted as well as to us. When the Lord Jesus Christ is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, separated from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might, when he comes to be glorified by his saints and to be marveled at on that day among those who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. To this end we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call, and will fulfill by his power every good resolve of work and faith, so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and you in him, according to the grace of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle comes from Luke, the song of Simeon. Lord, you have now set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Matthew chapter 6, continuing in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. 
Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now pray in the words that Christ has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Three prayers today, the first for towns, the towns we live in. Lord Christ, when you came among us, you proclaimed the kingdom of God in towns and in villages and even in lonely places. Grant that your presence and power may be known throughout this land. Have mercy upon all of us who live and work here in Cashers or in the towns which people joining in these prayers live. And grant that all people of our nation may give thanks to you for food and drink, for water, for air, for all other bodily necessities of life. May they respect those who labor to produce them and honor the land and the water from which these good things come. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. O God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth. Be it in elections in this country, or systems of immigration, or in Ukraine, or in other places where we struggle for justice and for truth. Help us in these places to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And this prayer for those in colleges and schools, uh, many graduations over the past couple weeks still going on last week of school in many places. Eternal God bless all schools colleges, universities, seminaries, that they may be lively centers for sound learning and new discovery and the pursuit of wisdom. Grant that all who teach and all those who learn and all those who are part of the administration, who are part of taking care of the buildings and grounds, the whole network that makes a school run, those who provide the food, everything, they may find you to be the source of all truth. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forevermore. Amen. Great to be with you this morning and pray that you have a great day and look forward to seeing you next time. God's peace.